Peter's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Lee McCulloch and Tam McManus here with me on this Friday and here's what we're going to be talking about. Steve Clark hints he could spring a surprise with his team lineup when Scotland face the Netherlands in tonight's friendly match in Amsterdam. These are the kind of games where you, where you can use that opportunity to try something that's maybe a little bit different, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Billy Gilmore urges Scotland to end their winless run with the midfielder warning the team are on top form as they build towards the Euros. Oh, and they're going to be a tough opponent, but I think we're in a good place. Hearts have landed two Scottish Premiership stars with Blair Spittle joining James Penrice in signing three contracts with the Tynecastle club. Nike are facing a huge backlash from England fans after they revealed the latest England strip will include a multicoloured St George's cross. Yeah, lots to talk about. Obviously, International Weekend, we all enjoy it, apart from Tom. He hates International Weekends. I just thought I'd tell you about that just before we start the whole thing. I called up. It's <laughs> <laughs> a, a very good point. Uh, any big real international questions, I'll be, I'll be talking yes. to these two, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, of course, if you want to interact with us, you can on the YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Join the football family. And if you download the app, You'll get all the breaking news at your fingertips. Thank you very much for all your support through all our programming on PLZ Soccer. There's lots to talk about with regards to Scotland internationals because two friendlies, Ruffy, and then we're off. Yeah, I think we're all waiting to see. Uh, this is a serious part of it. You know, I think uh, I think we all could pick nine of the 11, couldn't we? I think it just depends on whether he's playing a three at the back or a four at the back, you know who's going to support the, this striker, whoever the striker is uh, up front. So I, I think he's got to start planning now for the finals. I, I, I think the experiment is over now. I think he'll know the majority of the people who's playing. Do you think the experimenting is over? Because he's hinted, yeah, yeah. he's hinted there might be a wee kind of a, there might be a wee tweak here and there tonight just to try and uh, see a different system maybe. I think that's what it'll be. I think it'll be the formation other than wholesale changes in personnel, I think. We all know how loyal he is uh, to, to the players that, that have helped get get him in the, in the country there. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, what's going to happen over the le next two games. But still, there's still everybody, every player in the squad will want to now be looking at starting. I want to start, I want to start that first game. So they'll need to impress in the next two games. Yeah, uh, our reporter Alison McConnell um, was looking ahead to this one. Scotland take on the Netherlands and Holland this evening prior to hosting Northern Ireland here at Hamden on Tuesday evening. It may just be a series of friendly games, however, inevitably there's been a serious competitive edge to this training camp with players keen to utilise it as an addition for just who's making it onto the plane to Germany. They understand that I can only pick 23 and they're all trying to show how good they are in training, which is fantastic because it drives the, it drives the standard up and, and hopefully you see in the two games coming up that everybody's trying to show that they want to be part of the Scotland squad that goes to Germany in the summer. This is arguably the toughest opposition that Scotland will play prior to the tournament getting underway in June, with Steve Clark keen to utilise one or two new ideas before the real thing gets going. These are the kind of games where you, where you can use that opportunity to try something that's maybe a little bit different, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Maybe we have to readjust after we've seen it in, in action against the Dutch. Uh, but we, we just want to keep improving. And midfielder Billy Gilmore, who's so impressed at the last European Championships, is keen for Scotland to make their mark with a couple of morale-boosting wins. Definitely want to get back to winning ways. Uh, as you say, five five games without a win. Holland are going to be a tough opponent, but I think we're in a good place. Uh, coming back into camp, seeing everyone again, and there's a real good feel about the group. OK, uh, competition time. Quiz time uh, for you, Tam. We haven't won in the last five games. We've had three wins and two draws. Do you want to tell me who they were against? The three wins and two draws? Yeah. Spain? Yep. Uh, Try and keep speaking because the podcast Georgia. goes silent. Georgia. <laughs> Georgia. Georgia draw? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Georgia won? Nope. Uh, Norway won? Norway? That was a draw. What the one we won away? The one away for home? Yep. I don't know. No. Else. Draw for Georgia, draw against Norway and lost to France, Spain and England. I mean, that's that's three quality outfits, Peter. I mean, Holland are a good outfit as well. They're uh, actually three you would remember, don't you? 
the big teams. <laughs> when you look at that, that is spot on, not England, Spain, France. Yeah. Does yeah. that count? Can you say last five? No better just going and do the last two. Yeah. Um, positive but, spin. But, yeah, well, of course. <laughs> hey, <laughs> from that point of view, I was going to say to you, I mean, I would much rather. Would you see when you were going through the the internationals, both of you? Um, would you much rather play more difficult opposition, or did you want to kind of get that confidence boost of playing a team that you knew you, you could you could beat? Although it is, Scotland. <laughs> <For> <laughs> there's me, not many who we thought we could me, beat. The higher the better, because see these games against your lower, they're no easy, yeah. and the expectations sky high. If you're going get against an England, Spain, France, the new. You're not expected to win it, are you? Mm -hmm. So the pressure expectations are a little bit lower. So yeah, that's just my perspective. Before we went to Argentina, we played Luxembourg and Malta. Did <laughs> <laughs> you, <could> you win? <laughs> that, that that was was oh, no, didn't even play. Didn't even <laughs> play. <laughs> no, we didn't. I just made that up. Yeah, but no, I, I think. I think <laughs> huh. I, I think it depends who you've beaten the group. You know, if you've qualified out of a group with two big names, you, you know what you're saying is right. You know, you played against the two big ones, so you want to, you know, we want the fans going away in a happy mood and that. So I think the island ones are sort of a, the one to just get every at home, everybody backing the team sort of a thing. I think tonight's result, as long as it's a good performance, is okay. You think, do you think they'll play the strongest team tonight and then experiment against Northern Ireland? Do you think they'll switch it about? Experimental team tonight, and then a strong his, his team against Northern Ireland. Well, with Grant Hanley out and and Scott McKenna, um, for him, you know, he's not going to be able to select them. I think he could probably pick eight out of a, a strong. McGregor's not there either. Eight, eight out of a strong eleven because it's the Netherlands. The last thing you want to do yes, is go and no, get absolutely tonked in that stadium. Over. It'll be interesting to see what will happen with the goalies as well. So I'm not skipping the point, but it's mm. in my head. Will they just? A half each? I think that might be the surprise. I think play two of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, by the way, I do you know why, I don't know why you're saying that? You, know, you were there, weren't you? Yeah. Were you in the Amsterdam Arena after we'd watched James McFadden score at Hamden? Mm -hmm. And then yeah, we yeah. go to the Amsterdam Arena, and I'll never forget it. There was two things that stuck in my Well, three. The first thing was the whole stadium was orange. I mean, it was mobbed. Mm -hmm. The roof, the stadium is absolutely yeah. fantastic. So that was the first thing. And I remember we were commentating on the first. Now we go to uh, Amsterdam, we're thinking, there's a right chance here, because this is a European Championship qualifier, remember? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking to myself, well, Scotland will be a right chance here. Faddy scored, albeit with a wee, a wee deflection. Well, uh, I'm not kidding you. I think you were there, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. They battered us, mm -hmm. and it was 6 nothing. See if you can remember. Can you remember their centre forward? Yeah, because I've got it in front well, of me. Well, I tell you what, because I've my, my lasting memory of that, that night when it was 5 nothing, Scotland had pushed right up and their centre-forward had got the ball at the, half, the halfway line and he turned their centre-half and their centre-half had fell on the ground and was trying to catch up his Stephen Presley. Stephen Presley. But by the way, do you know what I remember about that game? Now, here's the Dutch team. Edwin van der Sar, uh, Reisiger um, uh, was also there, Oyer and uh, uh, Wilfred Boomer, remember him? Yep. Um, also Edgar Davids, Wesley Schneider, Mark Overmars, Raphael van der Vaart, uh, van der Merda, uh, Koku and van der Solroy. Now, hello. It's not bad, is it? Really? <laughs> <coughs> is that the, similar to the team that played the game before, previous at uh, home? Hamden, yeah. The similar team. Yeah. yeah, and we won. won I don't know how we won that game, but... No, absolutely not. But by the way, the substitutes they brought on, they did bring these three substitutes on. Clive Earp, no. uh, Seedorf and Frank De Boer. I mean, honestly, Ruffy, do you know the only thing that's stuck in my mind from that night? I'll never forget it. And this is the mark of a player. We were 4 nothing down then, 5, then 6. And still, Darren Fletcher was demanding the ball off the back line yeah. to try and push us forward. <coughs> and at that point, I looked and I thought, you know, he's just absolutely top draw. He's, he, he, I never played him with the, the top level, but I played him with the Scotland under 21s. I remember he came in, he's quite a few years younger than me. And he came in, he was maybe 18. We were all 20, 21. And he came in for his first training session, man, I was like, 
he's, he's unbelievable. He's one of the best players I've ever seen. And he came in for Man United. And I'm not surprised he got, I don't know how many caps he got, 50, 60, 70 caps for Scotland. Great player. Yeah. He was Underrated a, as well. Did you ever come across him? You, did yeah, you not play against Scotland. Did you not play against him? Played against him. I was going to say, right. Rangers Man United, was yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know if he played in the Ibrox game, but he played in the Old Trafford game. Yeah. He was unbelievable. Right, good player. player. Like, really, really composed, passing range, got a goal now and again. Um, I, he had humble boy, I know, he was humble, very, really humble lad. Nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember going down to interview him at um, the training uh, pitch uh, at Man United, and he was absolutely first class as an ambassador. I mean, as a person, anyway, I always liked him because I, I always thought he handled himself impeccably. Um, but what was he like as a guy and a teammate? Really good teammate, just a nice guy, humble. You would never guess that he was at that time. Playing with Man United week in, we could win the Champions League, didn't he, as well? Yeah. Um, just, he, he had everything. He's working for the club now, I think. I think he's working yeah. for some sort of um, sporting director role, although it's, he's not the actual sporting director. It's a similar role to, similar role to that. So it just shows you what the club think about him as well. Yeah. The highlight for me that night in, in Amsterdam was when the, the fans started singing, We'll support you up to four. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, Rob. I remember that as well. Um, the one good thing, though, I, I think as we as we get ready for these next two friendly games, is I think we're in a I think we're in a good place. I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how we do because I'm staying optimistic on the basis, Tam, that I think we've got a chance to get out of this group. Albeit, I know that we are Scotland and we have that ability to shoot ourselves in the foot at times. No, I think we have, Peter. I think obviously the first game is going to be difficult. I think you're playing a host nation in, in their home, in their backyard. That's going to be a tough game. And, but Germany, I've been poor for 12, 18 months now. I know listeners will be fired up at home, but if you can even get out of that way, I draw that game. You know, it takes you into the next two. You know, Switzerland and Hungary. You know, there's nothing to really fear, I don't think. Eh, Switzerland... Have always been highly rated, but they never really seem to do anything in the big tournaments. So, if you can come out with that first game intact, even if you lose narrowly, you know you're still in it because you would you'd expect Germany if they win that game to maybe get momentum and win the three games. So, no, I think we're, we're well in it, Peter. We've got a right chance of qualifying. Yeah, the other big pain. Uh, just out of curiosity, Ruffy, we're talking about warm-up games. Um, there was none. I can't think of a better one than you in the Maracanã. Um, ahead of the World Cup, did you not play against Brazil over there? We played again. We played. Uh, we played Chile first. We beat Chile four two. We drew one each with Argentina, and Brazil beat us two 0 Yeah, it's great. Maric Maracana is just something. Three else. games. Though. Three games. Now we played. It was a. That's not a bad set of results, isn't it? It was a. Is that before you beat trip. off Peru? No, that was a, that was a sort of a warm up trip. Yeah, were you not man of the match in the Maracana? Uh, of the whole tour, actually. Yeah. <laughs> man of the tournament. Man of the tournament. I'll bring my cup. I'll bring the tanker down and show you. <laughs> By the way, it didn't matter. It was a warm up game. And he threw one know, against I, Peru. I know, but can I just say something? He, he does actually have the tanker. He's got. He's got one of those big uh, units, uh, and it's just full of just stuff that you just think he's just outrageous. You were man of the tournament, weren't you? Yes, that was the sports writers who voted for the. That Scotland played at the tournament. Yeah, and do you know what's even better about that, Lee? Um, just shows you how much of a big softy he is. Um, he played in the Maracanã uh, against Brazil. Um, they lost two nothing. Uh, he kept a hold of his shirt and he gave it to me for, his, for my birthday. Oh, lovely. top yeah. man, honestly. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I sold it. For <laughs> I, sold, I, I sold it for about twenty-four grand. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, by the way, and I know it's just taking us off at a tangent, but you know it is International Weekend. Um, you've got a lot of medals uh, coming up next month, Ruffy. There's uh, you know one of the sporting auctions again. Mm -hmm. uh, McTears do a great one where people decide to sell medals, but boy, there's some there's some right good medals up for sale. Is that something that you would contemplate, or will you just keep them? I've never thought about it. I've, I've not seen them for than. I don't know where they're in the safe, I think. Yeah. I've not seen them. Yeah. Would I contemplate it? Don't know. Yeah. It's a strange thing, as I remember. Uh, Depends on what she gets. Well, I, rem I remember saying to Tommy Gemmel, how could you sell all the medals? You won European Cup winner, European Cup runner up. I think it was something like nine league medals, Scottish Cups, League Cups. And I remember him saying to me, well, 
my kids can't eat medals. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was a kind of I, mean, a, I remember speaking to him, he put all his stuff into a pension. The money that he got and because that's what he was working at away for the football. Yeah. And he put other than he got into a big massive pension. But there's some you know, you, mm -hmm. you do get some I mean we talked about Maradona's strip, but nevertheless, just looking at some of the the, the great medals, I'm talking about Rangers and Celtic medals are up, uh, league medals, league mm -hmm. winners medals, I think. Somebody's put up their uh, 2003 UEFA Cup runners-up medal. Um, so, For Celtic? Yeah. So, interesting times. It's always, it always depends on what way you look at these things. You never take, I think the great thing about it, you never take away the memories. The memories are special. No, I know, they? I know. It's I think if you're getting older and you've got kids and maybe grandkids and that, you might be wanting to leave them something in terms yeah. of... Uh, a money or something you'd maybe sell them. Depends on the person, did not it? I think. Absolutely. Depends on the person. Yeah, absolutely. Give them to kids, grandkids, or uh, sell them and give the money to the grandkids or yeah. whatever. I think, uh, Ruffy, you know, when you when you amass, if you're into memorabilia and you keep a hold of all these things, um, you know, I, I did kind of a look with a sincere look towards my daughter and say, will you be keeping a hold of it all? And she says, oh, I'll, I'll wait a couple of years after you've gone and, <laughs> and then eventually they're all going. <laughs> It's all getting yeah. sold. It's as simple as that, Ruffy. There's some good ones as well. Yeah, you've got, you've got to go. Uh, and I mean, last at every club. I finish, uh, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. As you would. Well, I'll, I'll tell you even better than that. So, <coughs> uh, before we got together, uh, Ruffy worked obviously for a um, rival radio station. Um, and I knew him just vaguely, you know, interviewing him every now and then, and we'd be at dinner, so I, I knew... I knew I'm okay, I wasn't as friendly as I am with him now. And he was putting all his shirts up that he'd picked out of the loft. And I phoned him up and I said, are you, are you selling all your, your gear? And he said, yes, yeah, it was a, I think it was, is it not Sotheby's or Christie's in, in Edinburgh you were selling it through? Christie's or something, I went up to the loft for my mum to investigate some pipe, pipe and I found a, a big chest wheel of jerseys because I used to give my dad my second jersey. Yeah. And he's obviously taken them all, all soiled and everything, no, just wrapped up and thing. So I said, what's the point? Yeah. You know, since I kept all my Scotland, England ones, the World Cup ones. And By the way, belters. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about the teams, that, the countries that they played against, he had some belters. Um, I know. It was some, it was some auction, by the way. Um, still, that's 1.4 million. Um, what do you do with it once you've got it banked? <laughs> uh, so, talking of strips that are uh, something that you like to keep um, for a bit of memories, and some people obviously spend a heck of a lot of money on them, here's a strip that kids will be spending a fair bit of money on, but it's not really a match-worn shirt. It's the New England top. What do you make of the Ferrari surrounding this, uh, Ruffy? Because, first of all, there's a a backlash because of uh, on the back right. of it they've changed, changed the it. England uh, the England national flag mm -hmm. and it's got these purples running through it and everything and Nike have changed it the FA have signed it off um, and Nike said that it's a, a playful update to unite and inspire but all hell's broken loose. What have they got in the front obviously I know that's in the back right in the collar but have they still got the three lines, the, the yeah. three lines yeah. and the, so I mean where was that at the back of the collar? Where did it used to be? Well, it's just a design feature. It's just a... <laughs> yeah. With the, well, I mean, St George's Cross, I think there's a tremendous amount of... I think yeah. what's happening with it... I, do you want my cynical take on it, Lee? I think what's happened is basically they've put the story out there and thought, a PR guy <coughs> has just basically said, let's create a bit of a Ferrari here because that will... Get uh, people talking. Get people talking, buy more strips, although... The authentic version, which the players would wear, is £124.99. Right? For the top? For the, right. So, uh, and for the kids, I think that's for the whole strip. Mm -hmm. um, for the kids, it's £119.99 for the stadium version, which is just one that, that, that wouldn't be the exact yeah. copy. And then there's uh, 80, 84 99 and then a child's one costs 64 99 that's a lot it's of coming up for sport, isn't it? With prices like that. Yeah. I, 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 think, I think that's why a lot of supporters are now going for replicas. 
You know, you see them going to the games right. and not the official thing, but a replica strip. Retro shirt. Retro right, ones, yeah. that, ones that they like. I think you see more and more supporters doing that. Do we know what the Scotland, the new Scotland prices are? Uh, do they? You, I'll find out right now. Because oh, yeah. we, we never spoke about that. Did we like that? Did we not like it? I was going to say, no, do you I don't like, like it? it. You don't like it? No, I don't like no. it, no. No? I don't like the, is it like gold or yellow it's got up the side? No, I don't like I, I think it's, I think it's a stinker. Yeah. Flea? <laughs> I th use, I'm, I'm weird when it comes to it. When I see a new strip, I usually don't like it, but then it grows on me and I end up liking it. 75 quid. What the difference? I know there's... You know, 75 quid for the top and then you can get some at 55. That'll, that'll probably be about, that'll be 100 and odd quid for the full strip on them, Peter. Time you get the shorts and the socks. Yeah, absolutely. And the away they're one... They're 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 far off, I'm not too keen on the away one, Ruffy. Depends how white it is. Yeah, no, it's, it's not sky white, blue. it's sky sky blue. blue. I like white. I like the Scotland white one, or the white yeah. one that they use. Yeah. I always liked that, but uh, I, I preferred the the Jim Baxter one, the Wembley one. Just plain, yeah, just the plain with the, the white neck. collar and the white, yeah. and the massive big badge. The big badge. I always liked. Yeah, that. I like. Do, do adults actually buy full, full strips? Adults. I'm Can not, they buy shorts and stuff? I'm not sure. Can you imagine somebody turning up in the full strip out of five a side game? That's what they I mean. Would, <laughs> they call them full they, kit what? They get, <laughs> full kit. They get slaughtered. It's, exactly. I just, I don't know. Do you, no, I can't see why it. Would you, why would you buy the full strip? Yeah. You're not going to go to the game with the full strip. You could date up a five, Well, can I tell you something? I, I, five with shinies, not? The God's honest truth. The people that turn up at our fives, if we left a cup outside, people would put money in it because we look as if we are absolutely in a fight, don't we? Uh, I mean, it's just outrageous. Speak so, for yourself, though, Peter. But yeah, I, I know, I, my gear's so yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my, my, big Jig's got a wig and JJB. Yeah. <laughs> my, 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 gears are, my gears are yeah, nightmare. The, the hats with the pheasants, things that they're outrageous now. They're about 30 quid. For the what? You know, the hats are where the pheasants the coming. Yeah. No, and the badges. No. There, are, there are a few, there are a few Jimmy guys. Oh, yeah. the ones with the hair. No, I'm not. From there. There, there are a few guys who really... Oh, the badges are given. Oh. Oh. And it, by the way, listen, fair play to them. They spend a lot of money um, following Scotland. I'm not so sure uh, that, you know, that kind of pricing. I, I agree with you, Rafi. I think it's, I think it's too much. Um, but nevertheless, the good thing about it is England... Uh, you know, I know we're talking about all the internationals, but England are playing Brazil on Saturday, mm -hmm. and it just evokes great memories, Ruffy, of the ultimate game for everybody, which was 1970, um, Brazil against England in the World Cup, which was memorable. It was one of those games where they, they reckoned it should have been the final. Yeah, I mean, obviously tremendous players away way back then, you know, unfortunately, you know, that uh, England fell at the final hurdle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they were great players. And the only thing is, when Brazil play the friendlies now, you depends who they send. You know, when they play friendlies over here, they tend to pick Brazilians that are handy, yeah. rather than trailing them all for South America to play their games. So, but I know, I know Brazilian teams are all usually well-known players. I, I think the Brazilian team now. I think you'd be lucky if you could name four or five. Yeah. Now. I must admit, you, you know, everybody just automatically would think Neymar. Um, they were poor in the World Cup, they won the great mm -hmm. World Cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Charleston was playing their main striker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this this team was Felix and Goal, Carlos Alberto, uh, Piazza, uh, Brito, Everaldo, Claudio Aldo, Rivellino, Jarzinho, uh, Carlo, Pelli, Tostao. It's not it a bad. It just gets better as you could do. <laughs> <laughs> just, it just, I, no, all it, all it screams to me is that we're not getting the ball back. <laughs> uh, England was Banks, Wright, Labone, Moore, Terry Cooper, Mullery, Ball, Charlton, Peters, Hurst, and Franny Lee. It was a um, Gordon Banks save that game, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely, which was out was of this two world. Two substitutes? Two substitutes, Colin Bell and Jeff Assel. Um, Thank God that wasn't he playing back then. I'd have made about 35 appearances in my career. Yeah, yeah, in total. Like two subs. Yeah, exactly. That's the other thing I was thinking about, Tom. But the 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 other thing about that that Gordon Banks save, which is linked to you, um, is quite simply that the nearest I've seen to that replica. You know what you're going to say. Alan McGregor's against yeah. uh, Werder Bremen. Mm -hmm. Werder Bremen away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was as close to that save. Yeah. You know how the ball's going in, and he somehow managed to get it up, uh, Alan, and flicked it over the top of the bar. Yep, yeah. Do you remember it? Yep, remember it. It was a wet night, wasn't it? Aye. Yeah. 
wet night, we get battered that night, and because of that save, we went through, and then that was a year we went to the final, wasn't it? Yeah, I've never seen a better save. No, in a probably long, long no, no. I mean, think of Gandhi Gora made some right top draws. It was against Van Hoydonk. But McGregor was Van outrageous. Hoydonk Van Hoydonk in the 3 3 game. Uh, yeah. That's one of the best saves I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, but Please but score, mate. <laughs> He's absolutely got to score, um, but uh, he didn't. So but see the way it's structured now. I think Scotland just need a win and a draw, you know, because the third best third place goes through as well to the last sixteen. Third place, the best goes third of all the groups to this last sixteen. Only the first best third. Only one of them. Second. No, no, I think there's four. Four. Oh, thirds. four. Four oh, thirds. Sorry, Frank. You think we're going to get through? I think I won in a draw. Enough to get us through, yeah, so yeah. that's goal difference included, meaning yeah, so so if Germany it was a big goal difference and we get beat. Yeah, it depends on the goal difference as well. Yeah. You know, but I think four points would be enough. Yeah. Just Derek, you check that by the way. Oh, I, 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 I know, sure, I know exactly. I'm not sure I know. if he's I'm, telling I'm, the truth here. Uh, the other thing, third place. I'm telling you this, Ruffy. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Uh, just, just let's just say, for I'm uh, not getting ahead of myself here. Let's just say we uh, we qualify. Mm -hmm. The boys don't know it yet, but will you be phoning me to say that you, you now want to come out and fly out for it's the... It's the 2nd of July, I think, that game is, yeah. if they get third place. And, and yeah. would you want to join us then? Uh, Maybe Morocco or India or it's something. You, <laughs> you know you've pulled out, don't you? Have you not got your own coming? <coughs> Unbelievable. Uh, what's he got on? Oh, he's got... <laughs> He's got, a, he's got a gig, so he's pulled, he's, pulled, he's pulled out, he's not going, unbelievable, that's it, that's fantastic isn't it, honestly, so it's suddenly, it's just, that's just, it's just taking it over to the, the Peter and Tam show, it's just, it's, we're getting there, do you want me to tell you something, it's suddenly, it's it reduces the average age on tour, oh my god, so, you'll, you'll let yourself down definitely, <laughs> when you go there. so uh, yeah, uh, Germany, um, Long tournament could be an absolute. So who's the best between the other two? Who do we think they're the strongest of the other two in the group? Mm. Hungary, Hungary were good. Hungary battered England in one of the games. Yeah, I think I think they might be the better of the two. Know, Switzerland have got good players, but I'd take Hungary or Switzerland. I think they'll be stronger. Sorry. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, I think that I think that could be the key game without you know, really diminishing what Switzerland. Usually, the first game for. usually ends up a draw. The opening game of most World Cups end up a draw. Yeah. Because it's everything that goes on. What year was John Collins' penalty? In the opening uh, game? 1998. Yeah. Um, we got, we looked as if we played well that day. Yeah. Uh, nearly got it. We own goal, set them on uh, the right path as well. But I think Morocco was the one that really disappointed everybody. We ended up losing to Morocco after a, a, a mm -hmm. narrow win over Norway. Mm -hmm. Craig Burley scored, remember? Yep. Um, but this tournament, I don't know, I've got a good feeling about it. Have you got a good feeling? Yeah, I Peter, I have. I don't think that's a good thing, but yeah. I think the expectations with us are, are we're going to qualify. And I like it when we get in there under the radar and people think we're going to get pumped. Yeah. I think we always do better. Yeah. When when was that tournament? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> Yeah, um, I thoroughly, I know, I actually, it's, it's amazing, and when we're talking about the Netherlands, it's amazing that fine line, because Scotland could have qualified had yeah. Clivert not scored the goal to make it, you know, 4-1 uh, for England. If Clivert yeah. hadn't scored, we were through, and Craig Brown would have forever been remembered as a, a manager first Scotland manager yeah. to get us out of the group and I, I have to say that I think if he if he manages to do it um, Steve Clark they were walking on Waterley nobody, nobody and rightly so and rightly so because nobody's done it before but I think with it, you see the sort of trajectories go has going on and as the team then the country the belief the full country of got in the team <coughs> um, he's totally changed things and he deserves all the credit in the world. If he goes and does it, then is he the best Scotland manager that's been? Yeah. That's what he is, because he's progressed mm -hmm. in the tournament. Did, yeah. did 74 get beaten goal difference? Yeah. Uh, Yugoslavia. One goal? Um, it was very tight, I think. It was, Uruguay, no, no. You, 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 no, no, we didn't. No, we beat Zaire 2 Yugoslavia. Um, we beat Zaire 2-0 and it was 0-0 against Brazil and then 1-1 against Yugoslavia and Yugoslavia hammered Zaire um, and Brazil also scored a crucial goal which knocked us out 
And I remember thinking about that. Ruffy is Billy Bremner a yard out right, against post, Brazil. Uh, and it was just agonisingly close. Couldn't get it over the line. That was another one of those. It's interesting, though, who you think is the best ever Scotland side we've had. You know, um, when you think about all the hype, the expectation at times. You know, the great players like Jim Baxter and Dennis Law. Probably about the best team was Ruffy. Ruffy's, Ruffy's team on paper is the best team there's ever been. As soon as and all that. The 82 or the 78? Is that Strachan as well? And I don't know, 78 and 82? Yeah. <coughs> I, I said to the player, I got a 40 in the house of the, the, the line-up before the Brazil game. Uh, and then I say seven. No, seven. No, ten. I counted them. Ten? Well, ten. seven of them had European Cup winners medals. Stevie Archibald was playing with Barcelona. He played in the final and lost to Stour yeah. Bucharest. Uh, out of the, the team lineup that you're talking about, I think it was the 82 lineup. Every player in it, bar yourself, and I'm not being facetious towards you, um, uh, every player of the 10 outfield players had either won the European Cup, were going to play in a UEFA Cup final, had won a UEFA Cup final, or uh, the Cup Winners' Cup. The 10 of them. So, so what era is that team? What, 82. 82. And what's, who's, who's the players in 82? Well, you're talking uh, from the goalkeeper, then you go to Stuart Kennedy, Cup Winners' Cup. Yeah. Um, then you've got uh, Frankie Gray played in the Champions. Leeds United Champions League final of 75. Um, then you had Hansen, mm -hmm. yeah. European Cup winner. You had uh, Willie, Miller. Willie Miller. And then the, the midfield of Alan Brazil, who won yeah. the UEFA Cup with Ipswich Town. Uh, then you had Archibald, Sinus. who played there. Sinus. Sinus, who was a European Cup winner. Strachan, uh, Dalglish, and then uh, Joe Jordan, Joe Jordan who played in the European Cup Jesus. final in 1975. Archibald. That's, and Archibald, we mentioned, played against mm -hmm. Stour Bucharest. That's some side, isn't it? See, see back in the days, I'm not being funny, back when everybody played football, then was there changes of formation, or was it just sort of like 4 4 2? Yeah. It four, was four, never three at the back. It was no, it was never a three. Five in midfield. No wing backs. No. Just four, 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 four two. two. Kenny and Joe up front. Yeah. Four in midfield. Not not most bad. that was most teams. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. Not a bad two. No. Joe and Kenny. Mike I'm Bassett would have done well in that era. Yeah, absolutely. Four, four, um, Brazil never played any formation. They just ran about. Just played. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you're supposed to be right back. What are you doing up front? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, do you know what? I, 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 I've mentioned this before, Ruffy, but one of my great friends, um, Peter McLean, who's celebrating his 60th birthday, oh, he lives in Brazil and he sent me, uh, he always sends me, you know, some of the stuff from over there, uh, all the news concerning some of the top players and the legendary features. And he sent me a video from Brazil TV where they did a programme counting down the top 50 Brazilian goals of all time and Ruffy's in three of them. <laughs> 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 Which is not bad going, is it, Ruffy? <laughs> no, I mean, you can't um, take these things when they've got a bit, you know, you can't. He's, he's like an extra bit. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, honestly, I mean, uh, three out of the 50 uh, you featured in, Ruffy, and you still had that look at the end of it. As if yeah. the keeper looking as if his defence had let him down. No, I never ever did that. I never pointed fingers at anybody. No. Never. Now you see goalkeepers running out going, mm -hmm. never done that. No. It's a point. It's no. finished. It's okay. gone. <laughs> okay. Um, to domestic issues, fingers crossed. Um, just out of curiosity, hopefully we get a, a positive result uh, against the Netherlands, then Northern Ireland coming up on the Tuesday. And right across our social media, we'll uh, bring you the build up to that. Uh, and of course, manager reactions to the Netherlands and looking ahead to Northern Ireland before eventually the painful point, Tam, is when suddenly you have to phone somebody and say you're not going. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, probably maybe do it face to face. I don't know if it'd be a phone uh, call. Uh, I, think bit, face -face. I, I can always remember it was a gas coin with Glenn Hoddle and he, t he went mental uh, in the, was it 98 or 2002, I can't remember, but I think you've got to do it face to face. I, don't, I think if you've got somebody that's yeah. paid for you and done well for you, I think you've got to go down and see them and say, "Listen, you're no, you're no involved." I have and to. It's going to be it's going to be difficult for them to pick, but it's not always face to face, though. I know. Oh, well, sometimes it should it be. Can be difficult to for it to be face to face. When's the when's the squad announced? Uh, it'll be. I think it'll end be. of the season, just before they go. Yeah, I would think so. I think they'll be. I think he's going to tell them in the last friendly. 
when they're all there. After Northern Ireland? No, after the next two. You can't. You can't. Well, it's got to be. He's got to be chatting to people now. But you can't. No, you can't do that. See if he does no. that. And he says to somebody, right, you're no coming, but thanks. And then the guy that is coming gets injured. Yes. Goes, oh, I told you you weren't coming, but no. You're in. You're coming. I've always wanted well, you. Well, I to think I, I know what you mean. You've got to, anything can happen. Injuries can happen yeah. at any time. Just out of curiosity, when did you know? I was never dropped at any. No, I know that. I know you were never <laughs> dropped. There's still that element of who's. Oh, in. I was disappointed. Then I got a letter saying thanks very much. Everybody else seemed to get one. Did you, did you ever get, get one? one? Did you ever get one when you left retired? No. I don't think everybody got a letter. Aye, right, Kenny, got a, no. Kenny got a letter. Yeah, Kenny got a letter. Kenny got a Yeah. Aye, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But no, I mean, it'd be a nightmare you're walking through the supermarket and the phone goes, What? I'm not gone? <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me on? <laughs> I know. Um, just a, a quick word. I always like to see, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I know we don't all share <coughs> with you, but I like, <laughs> You like to see the home nations do well um, in tournaments, uh, and I, I was delighted to see Wales defeating Finland to get to the playoff against Poland. Boy, do I hope the Welsh uh, make it because um, they bring something. They bring something, didn't? Yeah. To the party, Peter. Didn't know their atmosphere, their national anthems get spine tingling. I think it's brilliant. It's a great national anthem, and their fans travel in numbers. You know, the great Euros as well. So. I hope they get there, Peter. I hope they, they, they go they go quite far as well. But they've got a tough one against Poland. Oh, I think one five five one last night. So and Lewandowski never scored, so he'll be he'll be raging for the next game. Yeah, but the other thing about it as well, he is um, suddenly everybody was signalling their demise when Bale eventually is retired. But there seems to be another generation that might just be coming through. There is. They keep they keep getting there, and I I hope they they get there as well. But it's a difficult game they've got. I'm not sure they will get there. Um, but it would be brilliant to see them there because it'd be brilliant for the tournament and the atmosphere of the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And I hold my hands up to anybody who wants to absolutely cane me about you know we like to, <laughs> we like to see the home nations do well because <laughs> there is a point. Um, but even my two brothers, uh, Ruffy, just could not tolerate England doing well. Um, yeah. Um, you're of that I'm old school yeah you know I, I know what like it is to play in a Scotland and England game and how you're tossed aside you're no respect whatsoever they just I mean I think it's changed now I mean I don't think it's the players it? I, well I think it's the media more than anything else English media but you get slaughtered in English media just, I think I, I, the whole team did you just never get accepted you know just one of these things but, but no respect no too. respect at all even and if you ask Kenny or Graham and, I mean that, that was their sort of a objective was to win a game against yeah. England because they knew on the Monday they could go into the Liverpool dressing room or the Man United dressing room and they wouldn't be getting that. Yeah. Because when they did get beat, they got that big time. I always remember them telling us that. Yeah. Well, well to be perfectly honest with you, they, they gave as good as they got then because they were, mm -hmm. Scotland was a really good side. Um, OK, uh, fingers crossed. Domestic issues. Uh, in, a, in a break, in an international break, you always get these little stories coming out. Obviously, last week um, we mentioned on, I think it was the Journal's programme, that uh, you know I'd heard that Blair Spittle was going to be on his way to Hearts in a pre-contract. Uh, now James Penrice is another one there, and uh, Ross County's Jan Danda. He, he certainly, if I was a Hearts fan, I was looking at the players that they're looking at. I mean, I'm well impressed with Spittle this season. Yeah, and I, th I think that's what you've got to do if you're a Hibs or a Hearts. You've got to try and cherry pick the best players of the smaller clubs, with your Ross Counties, your Motherwell's, Commandlets, teams like that. You've got to try and look and see, right, we can pinch them. Maybe if they end their contract, we can give them a three or four year deal. And Hearts have done that pretty well over the last few years. Alan Forrest, eh, Big Xander Clark, Craig Halkett, three at the top of my head that can come to mind, that have all done well. And, eh, and I think that's... Plus, you know what you're getting, Peter. I think when you bring players in from England or abroad, the Scottish Premier League is a tough league. It's not technically a, 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 a great league, but physically and fitness-wise, you need to be fit and you need to be able to battle. You need to be setting balls, a lot of, a lot of scrap, scrappy games, so you need to know what you're letting yourself in for. So I think they know exactly what they're getting with the three guys. And <coughs> do I see the three of them actually starting? I'm not so sure, but they'll certainly add to, to hearts the depth they've got in their squad at the minute. Um, interesting you say that I see two out of the three starting um, I mean Penrice might have to battle it out with uh, 
Cochrane. Cochrane. Cochrane might, might move yeah. on. I think he's got a contract. Yeah. Cochrane's yeah. played a couple of games in centre midfield. Yeah. Uh, Kingsley. Kingsley as well. So, aye. And Dander has looked good at Ross County. Yeah. Uh, but Spittle. Hearts have got a lot of good players. And, uh, you know, that, I think those three going into the team, it, it, it all goes well for them for next season. Yeah. And the, the only thing I really feel sorry for Ruffy is sometimes when you get a situation where a player who was on the verge and actually pushing, you know, to try and get to the international level on a regular basis. Craig Halkett, he's just been the unluckiest yeah. boy ever with injuries. Yeah, he certainly has. I uh, feel sorry for anybody who has, like, long-term injuries. It must be a horrible, horrible thing to be sitting in a, a treatment room for eight months, you know, and wondering whether you're going to be the same when you get back. And then when you get back, you think you're full, and then it happens to you again. Yeah. It must be gut-wrenching. You didn't have many injuries, did you? No. No, you, Lee? No, not really. Yeah, no, Sam? Okay. Broken ankle uh, yeah. for Hibs. Bone came out the side of my sock up at Dundee. Boy came in and boy done me for Dundee. Italian yeah. guy. Oh, was, and, he, uh, was he just walking by the dugout? The ghetto. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> was he walking by the dugout? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a 50 50 ball, and he just he came in that side of me and he, he kind of straight legged me a wee bit. And then I thought oh, that feels terrible. And I looked down, I thought it was my shinny, shin pad that had popped out at the side. And the physio came How long were you out for? Seven months. Yeah. It was quite quick, is it not? Aye, it was a clean break that came right through. Yeah. Do you know got pins and plates on it? Do it? you know what this reminds me of, by the way? Jaws? <laughs> no, no, it's just the same. <laughs> it's the same. It's like history repeating itself because when I was on Super Scoreboard Radio Clyde and we used to have Derek, who is clone Ruffy, okay? <laughs> so D DJ would be there and Fraser Wisher, who was a really good player, right? right? But De Derek's standard line was, yeah, I, I watched Fraser playing his 100 best throw-ins. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Fraser used to go mental, uh, not realising, of course, yeah, Fraser was a, a top draw yeah. player. He ended up playing for Rangers, but he was brilliant at, at Motherwell, but... <laughs> Same with you. Did you get tackled in the dugout? I thought, this is DJ all over again. Um, one thing I was going to instantly, he picked up on it there, was Scottish players and the recruitment of Scottish players and homegrown players. I wonder what the attitude will be from Celtic and Rangers. Obviously, there's European football to think of next season. I mean, I think it's a dead... It might be not a dead cert. As close as you can think, everybody thinks Shanklin will end up at Rangers. What do you think of what was the first question? Well, the first part of it is, do you see Celtic oh, the, the just trying to recruit some... I don't know. Is there enough um, decent I, ones I out there? I think have done really well there. <coughs> I think the most important thing, as Tam said, is the signings that Hearts have made there, they three signings will be cheap, meaning they're not going to be... There's no transfer fees. And they know the league and they've done well in the league. And that, I think Hearts will be planning to be in Europe next year, next season. And... That's the perfect start for them. I think they'll bring in more. I think there'll be three or four, probably, will leave. Um, but the Scottish game is quite niche for the way that the teams play. Yeah. And so it's it's good to get the younger, not, not that <coughs> they're young, but to get people that know it and hearts look as if they're on it. Rangers and Celtic, I don't know. I don't know if, if there's anybody there that, well, would any of the three players at Hearts sing play with Rangers Celtic? No. I mean, I think the only one that anybody's mentioning is Lennon Miller. But that would be one for the future, Ruffy, if, if they decided mm -hmm. to snap him up. Um, would Danny Armstrong yeah. be good enough for Celtic Rangers? Who? Daniel Armstrong. Kelly. He's come on so much. Yeah. He, he's he, Confidence-wise. and What age is he? It's a good shout, actually. He's mid, I think he's mid-twenties. He's got to be a shout for their player of the year, isn't he? Aye. Aye. I'd like to think so. Or Mayo, when I heard back's done really well. Aye, physical yeah. Aye, he was good with us when we got him for Rangers. He's, yeah. not, he's quite young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I heard that Spittle and Penrice were going to thing me, I'm sure somebody at Thistle would be raking the drawers this morning to see if there's any sell on clauses. Aye. Yeah. Because I think there might have been with Penrice, but no, we. Did you always think Spittle was capable? Oh, he was the main man at Thistle when he came on. United to Thistle? Or Thistle to Dundee United? Yeah. Well, that's what Ross County that's used to Ross County. He, he went to Ross with County. Aye. I, I did, aye. He did. After us? Spittle. No, yeah. Spittle left to go Aaron to Jackson Ross had County. Aaron Jackson had him done 90. He was in the other day. Right, he yeah. went to Ross County. He's only 26. Armstrong. 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 
So, there you are. Uh, you think that you're, for Rangers? I don't think they'd see the boy Penrace you were talking about. I don't think he's a fullback. No, he's a wing back. I don't think he's a fullback. Yeah. Well, it, if you look at Spittle, Spittle's played right wing back, centre midfield, sitting, and call it an eight or a ten. Mm -hmm. for, yeah. So the cover position. Standard is <coughs> what a ten, a winger. It all depends what Stephen's formation so he's going to play next season. Yeah, he had a Super Bowl for Murray last week. Dander. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to say a joke there. Yeah. No, no that, that, John, that was waiting on it as well. <laughs> I'm just looking here. The question uh, was Blair Spittle, um, as far as the former clubs are concerned, uh, Queen's Park, Dundee United, Partick, Ross County on three separate loans and then Motherwell. So, uh, and again, as I mentioned to you there, uh, Blair Spittle's 28. So... Good, good. Is that a good signing? Right, really I think good so. Player? Well, 28, 28. Mm -hmm. Peak of your career, 28, 28. It's funny 28. when we yeah. sure Kettlewell and we were talking about uh, it, he was... <laughs> a ducky he must have, no, he must have. Yeah. Right. A wee sneaky. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, what year do you think you were playing your absolute best football? I don't know. Yeah? I really don't know. Was there not a year or a season where you thought, I'm on it, I'm, I'm no, there? I never felt like that. Eh? No, I never felt like that. I'm not that type of guy. You must have. I wasn't. Wigan? Was there a period there where you thought. I don't know, I don't know, right? Yeah. Well, Wigan were, Wigan Wigan. were in the, the. Championship season. The yeah. season where we got promoted. Yeah. I think we got 14 or 15 goals. From midfield? Mm -hmm. That's good going. And even in and the championship, yeah. <clears throat> Tam, was there a, a season? <clears throat> Probably Hibs. 2003 or something, I scored 12 goals. Yeah, that was my mate that scored. And I finished top goal scorer for Hibs. That yeah. was it. Have you, can you narrow it down to a year uh, roughly? Or probably, just so many? probably secondary school. Yeah, that was <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. Um, no surprise for you, Tam, that Lon Shanklin's appeal for a <laughs> for diving was rejected. Nah, I, I didn't think we'd win that. Peter, it was about a waste of a waste of a grand. How can you do? I didn't think you were allowed to appeal yellow cards. No, neither did I. I didn't realise that. Is it either. only if it goes? Contributes to the suspension, so it'd be the six yellow card or maybe the twelve, whatever it is. The ones that well, Shanklin's about eight or nine yellow cards this season, Peter. Yeah. Shanklin's about nine yellow cards this season. I couldn't believe it. I've it seen it the other day. If you go long enough, it cancels it. The point. Or something. Aye. It's a weird system. Yeah. He's yeah. one of the most. He's one of the most booked players in the league. Couldn't believe yeah. it. He doesn't spin mouth. He's a dirty player. Yeah, he's mouth and Shanklin. I don't know. So what? How many games will I get then? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Not sure. If he's got that many, it suggests that he would maybe get your most two or three. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to have a look at him right now uh, and tell you. you. Might as well get the deal on it. Where is it? There, it's there. Thanks, Tam. Because uh, and you're absolutely right with the yellow. <laughs> the, yellow the yellow cards. Uh, <laughs> Eleven. Eleven yellow cards. He's had. Eleven yellow cards. And he's no had a suspension. And twenty-eight goals. Um, so. He's 28 done goals. 28 goals, but obviously I think he's bam battered in a few for his country. Um, so he's done well. Um, and I think he's... Well, I'm interested to see if uh, the connection to Rangers eventually. Um, Stuart Kettlewell, you talked about there. He, he was in here and he was saying, I'm fed up looking at the SFM, I'm not going to bother. Well, <laughs> they've submitted a video package <laughs> to the SFA, so clearly he was at the bum steer there, Ruffy. He's, by he's way, absolutely... He, he's wanting an explanation on the rule regarding a handball mm -hmm. on the lead-up play prior to a goal. This is, of course, with Eamon Brophy against Motherwell on the 28th at Fir Park. But his main... His main uh, problem is it seemingly happened to Motherwell in a game, two or three games before that, and yeah. he actually said he said to the referee, <coughs> the referee gave him the reason why, mm -hmm. and then the exact same thing happened, and they never applied the same yeah. rule. Here's the here's the the issue that Motherwell have with it all. Uh, IFAB rules state accidental handball that leads to a teammate scoring or having a goal scoring opportunity will no longer be considered an offence. That's interesting considering a uh, uh, Theo Bear. Uh, we believe Theo Bear's handball does not meet the clear and obvious error threshold that clubs signed up to when VAR was introduced. Inconsistency of decision-making, regular lengthy VAR interventions during most games and a lack of clarity on why decisions have been made is having an impact on fans' enjoyment. Fan feedback on VAR is almost entirely negative and, if given a choice, 
we believe most would vote to, to no longer have it in use. Uh, listen, I'm glad he's narrowed it down to the fans because I know there's a lot of managers that are absolutely hacked off with it, Ruffy, including yeah. Kettlewell. Yeah, I think managers more than anything. To stand in the sideline and your team's playing particularly well and then you get something like that going against you. And if it's happening on numerous occasions, it's just going to make it worse. And at the end of the day, I think we've all spoke about it, it's points that keep managers in a job. And some of them, I think, they've been more hard done to than others. Yeah, St Johnson are going to hold talks with uh, Crawford Allen, just nip his ear before he eventually leaves the job. Well, I'm leaving um, just a minute. The uh, Graham Carey goal was disallowed after VAR. I, I think we're, we're actually sick to the back teeth of the talking over the inconsistencies and we're all well aware of the human error element of it. I think all we want in the summer is speed. We want clarity quick decision and we want the referee to make that call without any interference from the officials. You could maybe that. bring in a timer, Peter. Yeah, a minute. That would be, whatever, <coughs> it is, whatever it is, minute, 30 seconds. If you don't, if you have to look at it three or four times, you just go with the original decision that the referee's made. Yeah. If you're looking for something with a fine tooth comb and it's taking you a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, it's Sometimes probably not there. don't make a decision. Like, an offside. Yeah. Do you get that? That makes sense? In what, in Sometimes what they're letting play go to, to so VAR backs up the decision. You can go, oh, that's maybe a foul there, and they go, no, I'm going to let it go because it's going to get taken back anyway because of VAR. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But I, I think at the end but of the day, timer's a good shout. <coughs> it's, would it work? I don't know. I don't like the frame by frame either. Do you? Because no, I don't like the offside rule. I don't like the handball rule. Well, the offside rule's changing. That's that's better. I think for the better. Yeah, I think Wenger, if he gets his way, there will be clear daylight. There has to be clear daylight between the player and the attacker, the defender and the attacker, and the goalkeeper. I think that's great. It's that's great, great for the game. Uh, that's More great, goals. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Harder to defend. I actually put that. I actually put that on my, my Twitter the other day, and a lot of people were saying, "Well, teams not just sit deeper now." So don't want to get done in behind the half side. Maybe. Which was a pertinent point, I thought. Aye. Yeah. Well. Uh, there's always a way that players try and work out how to, Aye. you know, beat the system. Fast set of halves, then Aye. you can. Take the gamble. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, of all the other stories that we've been talking about, 41-point plan, um, the SPFL have revealed it, and there's a few changes that are going to take place. And I, I, I probably have to study these, Ruffy, because you are perfect on our show for coming up with a question that I, I actually look and I think, so I don't know the answer to that, mm -hmm. and I'd need to be a complete and utter geek to have read the rule book on it. So I might I might look this out and look at it, but Henderson yeah. Logie... Just Ding me over to me so I could have a look at it. Yeah, no, that would be a complete Ding waste of time. What's happening? Yeah. I was just about to say that would be that would be a complete waste of time. Uh, you're the only man I know who watches movies and doesn't like it if it's got a plot. Uh, so <laughs> uh, oh, oh. you liked Babylon, you liked that film. Yeah, so that was a good, yeah, a good, a good start to it. What's the best sports film you've ever seen? Oh. There's a belter, isn't hey. it? I'll go escape to victory. Right. Is that yours? Brilliant. Yeah. I like Jerry Maguire. Brilliant. Jerry Maguire's a great. Yeah, it's up there. That's great fun, isn't it? That's right. That's right up there as a Bull, I like, Bull Durham. I watched it the other yeah. year. It was absolute absolutely crap. Susan Sheridan. Superb. Yeah. Well, See no, what just... I mean? You know, honestly. Oh, it. <laughs> he doesn't even know he doesn't even know he doesn't even know what the story's about. <laughs> honestly. Um but, Moneyball. Eh? Moneyball. <coughs> Brilliant. Yeah, Moneyball's a good Brilliant one. Film. Moneyball's a good one as well. Field of Dreams. Kevin Costner. Oh. Field of Dreams is oh. absolutely magnificent. Coach Carter. Aye. Coach Carter's a good movie. Very good yeah. film. Remember the Titans? Aye. That's an even mm -hmm. better movie. Yeah. Do you ever get out? <laughs> that almighty, man. Right, films. Um, okay. Uh, I think we're getting... Uh, anyway, the, the point here... I'm Men right. of Honour. Great film. That's Sorry, no sports. Yeah, Men of Honour. Is that not... It's no sporty at all. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, <mate. laughs> who's, in, who's, who's in that movie? Cuba Gooden Jr. Yeah. All right, I'll need to watch that. Oh, that's up. an amazing film. He walks out of the courtroom with the big. Right. right, okay. No sporty. Escape to victory. I just said that. You said that. Oh, right. It's Friday, Ruffy. You know the Beatles are split up, don't you? Um, anyway. <laughs> just honestly face him. Mine is too much. It'd be interesting to see what rules, um, and also uh, I think the other thing about it, with, and it only in Scottish football, uh, of the 42 clubs that will meet at the general meeting on April 24th, 
Uh, the review caused a fair bit of consternation because I think Rangers, Aberdeen, St Mirren, Motherwell, Livingston and St Johnston um, had serious concerns, certainly uh, unhappy that the initial draft of the report was amended by the executives in their mind uh, before being seen by the rest of the board. That is open to debate, um, but hopefully we won't get the same debacle over the, the summer. They've just got to try and collectively try and make things better for the game and hopefully get us more sponsors in. I think that's the main gripe, Peter, is a sponsorship. I think yeah. they're looking at the money down England, uh, particularly with Sky are paying. And we're looking at our product and the money that Sky are paying us, plus some of the games that are not on. You know, the Edinburgh Derby wasn't on Sky the other day, so yeah. they're looking for... So there's a lot, a, lot, a lot of gripes with that type of thing. So, But unless there's another company in the background, Peter, an Amazon or a, a Google or somebody that's going to come in and take over from Sky, I think we're... I think we need to take the, the money that's there at the minute. Yeah, absolutely. It's not to say there's no somebody else out there, Peter, but yeah. a big risk to, I wouldn't to want get to make, that guaranteed money. I wouldn't want to make the same mistake as the Satanta deal. That's right. Um, that's for sure. Um, OK, a couple of things. Um, Borna Barisic will obviously call time on his playing career at Rangers and probably move on in the summer. Um, Turkish side Trabzonspor look as if they've got a, a, a deal for him when he comes to the end of his contract. Um Positive for Borna Barisic in his time at Rangers? Uh, probably, yes. He, he's just fell out of favour. I think his form's dipped a wee bit. And then Yilmaz has come in, who is playing for a, a place in the Turkish squad for the Euros. Uh, so he's playing every week. He's playing really well. So Barisic hasn't played for maybe about a month now. It looks like he's not going to play. So he's obviously, I, I didn't realise he'd, he'd signed a, or, or looking to sign the pre-contract yeah. so yep yeah, he's been a he's been a decent servant i think he's been a decent player if the one thing i would say that's the real positive about him at times ruffy boy he put in some really dangerous crosses with yeah. that left peg of his yeah when he get into that latter third you know he was always a danger you know i think it, it was defensively probably maybe a part of his weakness but i, I always say if they're, they're prepared to get that forward then other people should cover for them and you're right, you know, the balls that he threw in there were superb. Yeah, um, and just uh, one little footnote on some of the, the, the signings and clubs are linked with either signing a player or keeping a hold of a player who might be on loan. Would you pay six and a half million for Bernardo? Celtic, uh, or or on what I've seen so far, no. No? no. Would you pay, buy him at all? I would pay two million for him, maybe two and a half, three. Yeah. Most, I wouldn't pay six and a half. Yeah, spoke to Charlie Adam an hour ago, 150,000 <laughs> 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 Always like to stay in touch, just touch with Charlie. Aye, Charlie. I, I really miss those days. Oh, you? The best one I ever jig was when we were talking about Edward to Palace, remember? And we asked him how much he think he was worth. He was like, oh, about four million or something. We were like that, remember? Yeah. I think he went for about nine or ten. <laughs> Charlie's, well. Uh, top man. Anyway, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, okay, thank you very much to the guys uh, for sharing a few memories with us. Uh, and of course, uh, looking at the two friendlies coming up, hopefully. We're talking about a positive result for Scotland against the Netherlands and uh, we will review all that on Monday's show as well. And uh, look out in the next uh, few weeks because we've got some really uh, cracking uh, little commercials coming up, roughly uh, promos that I think everybody's going to enjoy. And you, hopefully Lee and Tam, yep. uh, are going to be involved in it. Yep, I saw some of the ones that you've done and they're, they're very, very good, very well edited and, and put in there. Yes, I so. <laughs> Thanks for that, Hoffy. I wasn't expecting a good team. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Kubrick there. Yeah, I know, exactly. Uh, anyway, because it's uh, basically oh, telling you that if you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, you can join the football family. There's lots of content ahead, lots of really big one-to-one -one interviews. And of course, as ever with our team uh, in the background, uh, producing lots of content on the women's football show, the Saturday preview show, let's not forget Straight Talk, the journals, and of course the football show as well. And there's also our European special too, as well as Kerry, Patrick, Alison and Blair and all the team going out and covering all the stories across Scottish football. There's some great, unique video content coming up. So from uh, Tammy McManus, Lee McCulloch, Alan Ruffin, myself, Peter Martin, thank you for listening and watching.